All right, you guys have worked so hard on subpart one. Today we're going to do subparts two and three, and then you'll be finished. The three things you're getting graded on today besides the answers to your questions are annotations, your genre-based thinking job for each passage, and then your testing strategies. So remember to use process of elimination. Remember to write your answer above and then go back in the evidence it, into the passage and tag your evidence. You'll get extra points for doing all of those things. All right, first passage we're going to read and annotate is called Excerpt from the Wanderer by Sharon Creech. Pause whenever you need to annotate. I am not always such a dreamy girl listening to the sea calling me. My father calls me three-sided Sophie. One side is dreamy and romantic. One is logical and down to earth. And the third side is hard-headed and impulsive. He says I am either in dreamland or earthland or mule land. And if I ever get the three together, I'll be all set. Though I wonder wh where I will be then. If I'm not in dreamland or earthland or mule land, where will I be? My father says my logical side is most like him and my dreamy side most like my mother which isn't entirely fair, I don't think. My father likes to think of himself as a logical man, but he is the one who pours over pictures of exotic lands and says things like, we should go on a safari, and we should zip through the air in a hot air balloon. And although my mother is a weaver and spins silky clothes and wears flowing dresses, she is the one who gives me sailing textbooks and makes me study water safety and weather prediction and says things like, Yes, Sophie, I taught you to sail, but that doesn't mean I like the idea of you being out there alone on the water. I want you to stay home, here, with me, safe. My father says he doesn't know who, the, who my hard-headed mule side resembles. He says mules don't run in the family. I am 13, and I am going to sail across the ocean. Although I would like to go alone, 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 flying over the water. I'm not. My mule self begged a place aboard a 45-foot sailboat with a motley crew, three uncles and two cousins. The uncles, Stu, Mo, and Doc, are my mother's brothers, and she told them, if the slightest harm comes to my Sophie, I'll string you all up by your toes. She isn't worried, although maybe she should be, about the influence of my cousin Brian, quiet, studious, serious Brian. But she frets over the bad habits I might learn from my other cousin, Cody. Cody is loud, impulsive, and charming in a way my mother does not trust. He is too charming, she says, in a dangerous sort of way. My mother isn't the only person who is not thrilled for me to take this trip. My uncles Stu and Mo tried their best to talk me out of it. It's going to be a bunch of us guys doing guy things, and it wouldn't be a very pleasant place for a girl. And wouldn't you rather stay home, Sophie, where you could have a shower every day? And it's a lot of hard work, and yakety yak they went. But I was determined to go, and my mule self kicked in, spouting a slew of sailing and weather terms, batting them over the head with all the things I'd learned in my sailing books, and with some things I'd made up for good measure. Uncle Doc, the good uncle I call him, because he's the one who doesn't see any harm in my coming, said, Heck, she knows more about boats than Brian and Cody put together. And so they caved in. There are two other reasons my mother has not tied me to my bed and refused to let me go. The first is that Uncle Doc gave her an extensive list of the safety provisions aboard the boat, which include a satellite navigator, the global positioning system. The second reason, not a very logical one, but one that somehow comforts my mother, is that Bompy is on the other side of the ocean. We will end up in Bompy's arms, and she wishes she could join us for that moment. Bumpy is my grandfather, my mother's father, and also Uncle Doc, Stu, and Moe's father. And he lived with my parents for many years. He is like a third parent, and I love him because he is so like me. He is a man of three sides like me, and he knows what I am thinking without my having to say it. He is a sweet man with a honey tongue, and he is a teller of tales. At the age of 72, Bumpy decided to go home. I thought he was already in his home, but what he meant by home was the place where he was born, and that place was the rolling green hills of England. My father was wrong about mules not running in the family. When Bompy decided to return to England, nothing was going to stop him. He made up his mind, and that was that, and off he went. Bye-bye, Bompy. All right, in this blank spot, before you answer the questions, 
you're going to pause the video and write your genre-based thinking job. Take your time, and whenever you're ready, you can click play again to hear the questions. All right, this is your chance to use your testing strategies that you've practiced in middle school. You're going to get extra points for using them. So you might want to pause the video after I read each question so you have time to put in your strategies. Number one, what is Sophie's view of her parents in paragraphs one through three? A, her parents spend too much time trying to understand her. B, her parents do not pay enough attention to what she is thinking. C, her parents are become more, becoming more like each other as time goes on. D, her parents have a logical and a dreamy side. Number two, how are paragraphs one through four of the passage connected to paragraph five? A, the narrator gives information about herself and her parents before she tells her age and her plans. B, the narrator suggests that her parents have disagreed about what she wants to do before she tells what it is. C, the narrator explains that she is confused about herself before she tells why this is true. D, the narrator hints that she has made a difficult decision before she explains what she was trying to decide. Number three, what is the meaning of the word provisions as it is used in paragraph eight? A, ideas. B, supplies. C, gifts. D, rules. Number four, which two sentences best express Sophie's view of Bompy? A, he understands her completely. B, he is surprisingly selfish. C, he is deeply stubborn. D, he will not admit his mistakes. E, he is kind to everyone. Number five, select two sentences that express themes of the passage. A, Children may not appreciate the good qualities of their parents. B, a person may need determination to achieve a goal. C, stubborn people are usually unwilling to follow good advice. D, adults often think they know what is best for young people. E, even a carefully planned adventure may take an unexpected turn. Number six, which sentence should be included in a summary of the passage? A, Sophie's father imagines going on a safari or riding on a hot air balloon. B, Sophie's mother is a weaver who makes Sophie study water safety and weather prediction. C, Sophie's sailing trip will end in England where her grandfather lives. D, Sophie's grandfather decided to move to England and nothing could change his mind. All right, pause here. When you're ready, you're gonna click on the next video and we're gonna do the last passage.